COVID tests. Can you remember what they look like and how to use them? I can just about remember. Well, you know, the technology in them is sophisticated and they're not just useful for COVID, but for a whole host of other diseases. I've come here to Imperial College to find out how they're making them better and much more powerful. Molly, what an impressive lab you've got going. So many people busy away doing all kinds of different research. You must be so proud. Yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful team. How do you contain it all and stay focused, essentially? Well, the focus is on doing scientifically excellent work that's going to have a really important biomedical impact. So that can take the form of different projects, but really the core focus is all around doing these really, really great scientific and engineering innovations that are going to help people. If you think of heart failure or cancer, or infectious disease, all of these things are going to benefit from having better earlier diagnostics. But it's also about if one of your organs starts to fail or your bone breaks, for example, how can we better repair those organs. We've been looking at COVID tests today. Mm -hmm. I know it's just a tiny, tiny part of the research that happens here, but is there like a multi-pronged approach to research, like maybe four major categories of work that happens in your lab? I'd say three major categories. So one is around researching materials in the biosensing area and the other is materials in the advanced therapeutics and regenerative medicine area. And then it's all underpinned by an area that we call characterization. So that's about developing techniques that can help us to better understand materials. So part of what we're trying to do is make lateral flow strips more sensitive and detect different diseases. So I've got a solution of a few different nanoparticle solutions here. Colors are a really good readout very easy for people to see. Uh, you can envisage a scenario where this might target one disease and this is different. You can say like, you know, yellow means this, red means this, but one here that looks a little bit different. And I'm interested in analyzing that a little bit further. So in these currently, we have polymers. So we have highly fluorescent polymers and they form tiny little bubbles, like little vesicles, and you can load those with different things. Or you can functionalize the outside to target certain diseases and things like that. So what we're really interested in here is using these nanoparticles to target and, and to detect diseases. So it may not look like much in those little vials, mm -hmm. but actually there's loads and loads. I mean, like a crazy number yeah, of millions particles and millions and millions that are doing of, uh, really smart things. Yeah, absolutely. So I've analyzed three of them already, the ones that are nice and brightly colored. This one looks a bit different. It's quite easy to see. So we just want to go and check how this is looking with an analytical technique that can look at nanoparticles. And we're very fortunate in the group to have Sparta, which can look at these on a single particle basis. So what um, do you actually have to do to so make it ready just, for a Sparta analysis? Well, it's very simple. We try to design it to be very simple. If you want to prepare a very small amount of that, into here and we can take that over to do some Sparta. Yes, I'm having to like recalibrate the scale of things because everything's small. Yeah, Look absolutely. at the size of this. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, this is where I've got my contacts in. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you want to perfect from that solution into there and we'll go and uh, I can, hold, never it. I can used, hold it for you. Never use, so I'm pressing down. Just pressing down in this, yep, yeah, and then going into the solution. Sucking it up, there you go, perfect taking that over. This is fun. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what Sparta is. So Sparta is a technique that can capture an individual small nanoparticle and measure its chemistry in an automated way. And so that's, that's really revolutionary and it enables us for the first time to understand the chemistry of individual nanoparticles within a large population. This is a really exciting piece of equipment because you know it's completely homegrown from Molly's lab. How many of them in the world are there? So this is the only one. We are the only lab currently that has this machine. That's amazing. What are you going to do with that sample using Sparta? The whole process is quite simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sample. I'm just going to pipette it onto our glass chip there. So what we're trying to understand is the chemistry of these particles. There's lots of spikes. There's lots of one. spikes, exactly. So yeah. each individual chemical has its own individual, we call these a fingerprint, because there's so many different peaks here. They all are very individual to the particular chemical that you have. And so what you can do is you can start to build up these kind of diagrams. And so here, each one of these dots is representing the chemical information from one particle. Now that we understand the particles a bit better, we can go and give these to Tabasum to put them into a lateral flow device. Shall I do that? Yep. I'll be the little, uh, <laughs> how do you call it, messenger. Tabasum. I have this from Kat. Thank you so much. So tell me, what are you going to do with that now? So we're going to be using these nanoparticles to run our lateral flows. These nanoparticles are going to be used as a, tar as a label for detection of the 
disease that we are looking for. So in this case, we are looking to detect COVID-19. So what's your specific research doing? So we are trying to make the test better and make it more sensitive by engineering new nanoparticles. And these new nanoparticles have loads of different usages. Nano is amazing, really, isn't it? If you take the sun, you shrink it down to a football and you shrink that football down by the same amount. of Again, you're then at the nano, the kind of size of these particles that we're often working with. So when materials have that nanoscale dimension, they can have really interesting properties, interesting ways of interacting with cells inside the body. And so you're using that knowledge to create diagnostic tests. Yes. Advanced therapeutics, yeah, that's right. Small particles that can deliver cargo into the body and, and help with a lot of different diseases. By doing these little tweaks and engineering, we can actually improve the sensitivity of the assay to 100 folds or more than that. So that means that you can actually detect patients at a very, very low level infection levels or when they are asymptomatic. So the COVID tests are good. You're just trying to make them better. Yes, exactly. We can then add our particle. Now, these particles are the detectors or, as I said before, they are the labels. What would that have been? So that would be maybe a saliva sample. It could be any sample from human, literally. Okay. What kind of diseases do you work on? Um, we work on loads of different diseases. Malaria, cancer, heart diseases, um, HIV. I have never known a test to test if you've got malaria. Yeah. You know, my parents are from Southeast Asian countries. A test like that for malaria would be really useful. Today I got to see a very collaborative process and it is an engineering process because the academics here are finding amazing advanced solutions to some really complex problems in medicine. They work so collaboratively, they clearly have a lot of fun and it's all geared towards engineering better healthcare solutions. I mean, it doesn't get more engineering-y than that.